Hello, welcome to the Good Old Days of Radio Show. This is John Tefteller, your host. It's Tuesday, Comedy Day, and I have just been informed by producer Daniel that comedy is king, that lots and lots and lots of you people want to hear more comedy. So, okay, we'll lay off the dramas on Tuesday for a while and we'll just do Comedy Tuesday. Anyway, so we're going to do a little mini theme for the next few weeks, next few Tuesdays, and the mini theme will be married comedy teams, comedians who are married to other comedians and who had radio programs. And I guess probably the most famous of those four that we've selected would be uh, George Burns and Gracie Allen. For those of you who don't know anything about George Burns other than he was a very old man on TV smoking a cigar and making jokes on late night TV, George Burns goes way back, way back to vaudeville. And when he started in vaudeville way back, he started with his wife, Gracie Allen. And Gracie Allen appeared with him all throughout vaudeville, all into early radio, later radio, television, all the way up until the early 60s when she passed away. I I think, if my memory serves me, she retired a little bit before she passed away, but not much. Um, she was with him pretty constantly. After Gracie passed away, George continued to appear all over the place. He didn't really get super great recognition for that until the talk show circuit in the 70s and 80s, and even into the 90s when he was still alive. Uh, and as he was growing older and older each year, he became more and more of a celebrated figure. Um, he never lost it, so to speak, as he got into his late 90s. He wanted to live to be 100. He didn't quite make it, but uh, he never lost his ability to think and make jokes all the way up until the day he died. And that's an accomplishment. So we have for you today an episode of the Burns and Allen Show, so you can hear Gracie. Um, I actually like Gracie a lot. I think she was um, really in a way, the better half of his act, but George on his own could be very good, as, as he proved later in life. So today we have Burns and Allen together from February 5th, 1948, and it looks like it's about Gracie wanting a new mink coat. So we'll, uh, we'll rile up all the animal activists out there who don't like mink coats, but sorry about that. Here we go. Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George. Sure, pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House coffee time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Toby Reed, Gail Gordon, Elliot Lewis, Hans Conried, Verna Felton, Meredith Wilson, and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Today, more Americans buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee at any price. Yes, Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. Well, as we join the Burnses today, we find them in a downtown department store taking advantage of the February clearance sale. These clearance sales are wonderful places to save money, George. Yeah, I guess so. What do you need? Oh, just little odds and ends. Do you want to get some things for me while I look at bath towels? Sure. All right. Here's a pencil. Make a list. Okay. Um, a sink strainer. Sink strainer. A paring knife. Paring knife. Uh, a pot holders. Pot holders. Uh, floor wax. Floor wax. Mink coat. Mink coat. <laughs> Potato masher. <laughs> Potato... Wait a minute. Dish rag. Wait a minute. <laughs> Paper towels. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Dish rag. Paper towels. How did a mink coat get in there? Oh, you noticed it, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was hard to do. Oh, well, I thought... I, I thought if 
I buried it in the middle of the list, you might divide before you realized it. <laughs> forget it, huh? Forget it, forget it. I should say... Well, uh, is it all right if I get an old, beat-up second-hand mink coat? Second-hand? Well, I'll be about the 15th to wear it. Who wore it before? 14 minks. <laughs> Gracie, I wasn't born yesterday. What do you take me for? Mink coat, I hope. <laughs> Forget it. Now, let's buy those other items on the list. Uh, how many potholders do you need? Fourteen. What kind? Mink. I'll sew them together. <laughs> I said, forget the mink coat. Oh, all right, dear. Now, where shall we go first? Uh, the, the fur department. I want to make a phone call. <laughs> we'll make it from here But up there I can make it for nothing Really? Well sure you get a free call with every mink coat <laughs> Gracie, you're not getting me in the fur department Now let's get in the elevator and do the other shopping Going up, step back in the car please I know. Oh. Where, where are the kitchen utensils? Kitchenware is on the fourth floor Step back in the car please <laughs> We're packed in here like sardines now yeah, and my back itches. Would you scratch it for me, George? Sure. There. How does that feel? Fine. Only a little to the left, please. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I got the wrong back. There. How is that? Fresh. <laughs> Again, I miss. George, my back still itches. I'll try once more. Oh, that feels wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome, lady. <laughs> you did it? Then who's back of my scratching? Mine, and take it easy. Your nails are very sharp. <laughs> Start the elevator, will you? Second floor, ladies' shoes, hats, gloves, and dresses going up. Third floor, ladies' fur coats. Oh, oh, I'm going to faint. Quick, George, take me off the elevator. Faint on the next floor. That's kitchenware. Oh, oh, I'm passing out. No, you're not. You're staying right here. Sir, your wife has fainted. Mind your own business. Are you just going to stand there with an unconscious wife? Why not? I've been doing it for 14 years. <laughs> You carry her off this elevator or they'll be carrying you off. Okay, okay. Mm. Mm. Try a piggyback. Oh, never mind. I've got her now. One side, folks. My goodness, what's happened? This lady fainted. Oh, where am I? You're in the fur department. Shall I throw some water on you? No, just throw a mink coat on me. <laughs> okay, Gracie, you tricked me into the fur department. But you're still not getting a fur coat. You're just in time to see our fashion show. The models will parade by here in all our latest fur creations. We're not interested. We're just leaving. And then they remove the furs and model dresses. Sorry, we're in an awful hurry. And then they remove the dresses and model lingerie. I guess we could stay a few minutes. <laughs> uh, have them hurry through the fur show. Well, here comes the first model. This is lovely Siberia Kalinsky. How do you do, Miss Kalinsky? <laughs> Kalinsky is the name of the fur. Oh. And here is a perfectly divine number. Note the full sleeves and extreme length. It took 12 beavers to make this coat. Really? How long did it take them? <laughs> the beavers contributed their skins. Oh, well, it's beautiful. Oh, and it feels so soft. Gracie, get your hands off that coat. Oh, I just want to stroke it, George. I won't hurt it, George. I just want Take to stroke it. Take it easy, Lenny. Take it easy. <laughs> you know, this is awfully pretty. Maybe I was hasty about not getting you a fur coat. How much is this coat, miss? Only $4,300. Miss, you know that water you were going to throw on me? Yes. Well, you better throw it on my husband. He's fainted. Now, Gracie, ever since we got home from the store, you've been after me for a fur coat. The answer is still no. Oh, now you're turning on the tears. I suppose I'm a brute. 
I suppose I treat you like a dog. No, you don't. Of course not. The dog has a fur coat. <laughs> Will you stop? Oh, everyone has fur but me. Cats have fur. Rabbits have fur. Even you have three hairs on your chest. Four. Think of my health. Buy me a fur coat so I won't have to go around shivering in the snow. It doesn't snow in Los Angeles. Then buy me a fur coat and a ticket to New York. <laughs> I refuse to discuss it any further. Well, I read in the paper about a woman who caught pneumonia just because she didn't have a fur coat. <coughs> she, uh, she caught pneumonia and died. <coughs> Better have your black suit press, George. <laughs> Marry again, but not too soon. Remember me a while. <laughs> and George, take my insurance money and buy yourself a fur coat. I don't want you to go the way I'm going. <laughs> Forget it, huh? Forget it, forget it. <laughs> now go get lunch. No, all right, dear. What a woman I married. Oh, well, better than going back with Banco and Gurley. Oh. <laughs> Come in. Howdy, little man. Oh, hello, Mr. Judson. Say, I wish I had some of that Texas oil money of yours. Gracie wants a fur coat. Why, shucks, down home I got one for my wife and it didn't cost me nothing. I just went out in the woods and shot some rabbits. And made her a coat? Yep, beautiful mink coat. <laughs> Mr. Judson, you can't make a mink coat out of rabbit fur. These was Texas rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot, everything is better in Texas. You bet your life. Yeah. Texas is better than the other 47 states put together. Hmm. Surprise you admit that there are other states. Oh, why, sure, them 47 states are the USA. Right. The United Suburbs of Amarillo. <laughs> Mr. Judson, USA means the United States of America. Yankee propaganda. <laughs> I guess so. Now, you do what I done and shoot your wife a fur coat. Of course, it was easy for me because I'm a dead shot. I just drawed a bead and plugged that rabbit four times. Well, if you're such a good shot, why did you have to plug it four times? I'd done it a purpose. I knew I was going to make a coat out of it, so I shot in the buttonholes. <laughs> <laughs> take it easy, Mr. What? Jackson. Man, where, where I come from, that's just ordinary shooting. We got fellas in Texas can shoot the yolk out of an egg without touching the white. <laughs> Mr. Judson. <laughs> that, that's why they sent all the soldiers down there to be trained. During the war, that state was just full of happy sacks. Happy sacks? Don't you mean sad sacks? In Texas? <laughs> I lost my head. Hello, George. I, oh, hello, Mr. Judson. Howdy, little lady. Say, I was telling your husband how I went hunting and got enough animals to make my wife a fur coat. Why, that's a wonderful idea. George can do that, too. How did you get them, Mr. Judson? Knocked them over with my Remington. Oh, hit him on the head with a typewriter, huh? <laughs> hit him on the head... <laughs> Ah, yes, the title song from Oklahoma, still going great guns five years after opening night. How about that, Meredith? What keeps these songs on the hit list? Is it that marvelous Rogers sense of melody? Well, there's more to it than just melody, Toby. A Rogers score always blends all musical parts perfectly. Show you what I mean. Here's one of the biggest hits from Oklahoma. Now see if you can recognize it when we play only the mellow harmony. Now 
Now we'll add a rich counter melody. Well, that's mighty appealing, Meredith, but I still can't name it. Well, then let us add the vigorous rhythm section. And now we'll round out the song with a melody to complete this blend of one of the most popular American songs of recent years. Why, certainly. Oh, what a beautiful morning. And friends, just as America's favorite melodies are created by carefully blending many orchestral parts, so too with the creation of America's favorite brand of coffee, Maxwell House. For the superb good to the last drop flavor of Maxwell House is achieved by blending not one, but many varieties of premium, highland-grown Latin American coffees. With painstaking care and skill, the Maxwell House experts select Manizales for Melanus. For richness, they add Medellins. For vigor, they choose other choice coffees. And for fine, full body, they add Bucaramangas. up to great coffee, radiant roasted to the very peak of flavor perfection, and brought to you roaster fresh two ways, either in the familiar blue tin or in the brand new ultra vacuum glass jar. So friends, start at once to enjoy America's favorite coffee. You can for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. Insist on Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. Now listen, Gracie Just because Mr. Judson shot a fur coat for his wife Doesn't mean I can do it Why not? Why not? He's good that guy can shoot a rabbit blindfolded Well, so could you if you saw a blindfolded rabbit <laughs> Suppose I shot a couple of rabbits Would you be satisfied with a rabbit coat? George, I'd rather have a rabbit coat from you Than a mink from Saks Really? Can I have a mink from Saks? <laughs> no I'd rather well, have, have a, a rabbit, rabbit from, from you. you I know, well, thanks very much Come in Hello, Gracie. Hello, George. Oh, hiya, Dr. Miller. Oh, Dr. Miller, I'm so glad you're here. You're a psychiatrist. Now, maybe you can reason with George. What about? Well, I could have a fur coat if he'd go out in the woods and get the rabbits, but he doesn't think he can. Why, of course you can, George. It's the law of nature that man should wear the skins of animals because he's more intelligent. Yeah, huh? Certainly. That's why Gracie can wear a rabbit skin coat. If the rabbit was smarter than Gracie, it would wear a Gracie skin coat. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. Uh, hey, a hunting trip might be fun. Would you come along, Doc? Oh, I'd love to, George. Uh, you know, I've got a wonderful shotgun. You automatic type. You just insert a magazine. Oh, that is wonderful. You can hunt and read at the same time. Um, <laughs> uh, what, uh, what are you thinking about, Doc? I'm just wondering how a rabbit would look in a Gracie skin coat. <laughs> I see what you mean. Come in. Hello, all. Oh, hello, hello Meredith. Uh, hey, Mayor, would you like to go hunting with Doc and me? Oh, you bet I would, George. As a boy back in Mason City, Iowa, I used to take the shotgun and head for the woods every Saturday with sport trotting by my side. Good, good. I can still hear Papa's tender farewell. Be careful and don't shoot yourself, son. Those shells cost money. <laughs> Look, Meredith, would you like to hear an exciting thing that happened to Sport and me one day? No. Well, we, sir. I thought so, yeah. We were hiking. We were hiking through the woods. Sport was frisking about, licking my hand, when suddenly he stumbled upon a rattlesnake. 
With a startled cry, he yelled, Meredith, save me from the reptile. Well, sir... Wait a I... minute. Wait. Your dog said that? Oh, Sport isn't a dog. He's my brother. <laughs> well, sir... But you said he was licking your hand. <laughs> yeah, I'd been eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> well, well, sir... sir I'm not... <laughs> Goodbye. Well, go hunting, but go... George, go. don't you want to hear the finish of my story? Oh, no. No. <laughs> Very well. I'll plan on going hunting with you. Good. And don't worry about shooting yourself. I'll pay for the shells. <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye, all. Oh, go, go. Um, what are you thinking about now, Doc? There goes another skin for the rabbits. <laughs> yeah, the rabbits are too up on us. Well, perhaps we can even the score on this hunting trip, huh? Well, why don't you invite Dr. Uh, Mr. Judson and Bill Goodwin to go along? Oh, good idea. I bet that Judson's a crack shot. Oh, not as good as George. I remember the time George went hunting with a bird dog, a pointer, and a setter at his heels, and a big sack over his shoulder to carry the game in. He only fired three shots, but when he got home, that sack was full. What was in it? A bird dog, a pointer, and a setter. <laughs> I can't understand what happened. I've got eyes like a hawk. Why, I'll bet I could shoot a hole right in the middle of that mouse hole. I'll bet I can, sh I can bet I can shoot a bullet. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't worry, Doc. That's only twice today. <laughs> I'll go and come in again. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start. Let me give myself two beats. One, two. <laughs> I'll bet I could shoot a bullet right in the middle of that mouse hole. Good. What mouse hole? There in the corner. That's the fireplace. <laughs> I wrecked it, didn't I, Doc? <laughs> well, Doc, my car's at the garage and it's being tuned up. I'll go after it. Uh, you call the other fellas. Your car's all ready, Mr. Byrne. Look at the way I tuned up that motor. Swell. I'm going on a hunting trip this afternoon and I can... Wait a minute. You're the fellow who's been giving me trouble for weeks. You always had a different, uh, different job, and you always lost your temper. Well, only because I was a poor, frustrated soul, pushed into jobs where I didn't belong by the fickle finger of fate. <laughs> I see. But now that I'm a mechanic, I do things that really help people. Why, I ground your valves, and I scraped your carbon. If you want me to, I'll adjust your gasket. No, my gasket is fine. I can eat anything. <laughs> I'm so happy with this job. Glad to hear it. Let's have my keys. Please. Being a mechanic has taught me a lot about life, too. Life is a piece of machinery, and we're all parts of it. Some of us are cogwheels, some of us are spark plugs, and some of us are just nuts. <laughs> that you are. I'm so happy with this job. <laughs> Please, the keys. I've put this engine in tip-top condition. When you drive off, it'll surge with power. Good, good, good. Let me have my keys. You'll be able to pass everything on the road. <laughs> and you'll go by. <laughs> you'll go by. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now get me the keys, please. I'm so with this job. <laughs> I can see you now zooming along faster and faster. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. <laughs> Wait a minute. Driving that fast is very dangerous. I won't drive fast. Give me the key. Oh, you, you might lose control. You'll skid. You'll go off the road. I'll go five miles an hour. The key's right. <laughs> You'll crash into a tree and be thrown out of the car. You'll land on your head and get a concussion. I'll ride a bicycle, the keys. <laughs> you may recover, but for the rest of your life, you'll have blinding headaches. And all because the garage man made me tune up this motor. I use a scooter, the keys. <laughs> well, I want no part of it. I'll quit this lousy job. Please, let me have the keys. And give you a concussion? Never. I'll take my monkey wrench Where and wreck this I motor. I'll wreck it apart. Hey, hey. Smash it to bits. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. There. I've kept 
kept you from having a headache. <laughs> Bye. Now, George, calm down. Bill says we can take his car on the hunting trip. Oh, sure, George. I do lots of hunting in my car. Where do you hunt, Bill? Up and down Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> On Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, 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 silly girl. <laughs> this is a different kind of hunting we're gonna do, Bill. So for once, get your mind off women. Well, okay, George. From now on, I'll concentrate on Mother Nature and the trees and the flowers. Good. Are, uh, are you an outdoor lover, Bill? Oh, yes. Not bad indoors, either. <laughs> Bill, can't you think about something besides women? Think about animals. Oh, all right, George. I'll think about those soft little creatures running around in Griffith Park and... Oops, there I go again. <laughs> this guy is mighty. Now, look, Bill, do you want to go hunting or don't you? Well, I do, George, I do, but it's hard for me to forget women. Oh, bother the women. Don't suggest that. He'll never go hunting. <laughs> You're not kidding. Come in. Come on, Mr. Judson and Meredith and I are ready. Yeah, I'm hankering to do some shooting. Me too. Uh, say, how about food? We've got it. I told Gracie to put some real hunter's grub in these packs for us. Beans, bacon, and coffee. Oh, oh that's nice. Oh, that's now, well. here are the sacks. Oh, my goodness. What's the matter? The sack I put the hot coffee in is leaking. <laughs> you made the coffee before you put it in the sack? Well, certainly. You don't expect me to leave everything to the last minute, do you? Gracie, when it comes to coffee, just leave everything to wonderful Maxwell House. Oh, yes, it's the very best in coffee drinking pleasure. Yet it costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee you can buy. Yeah, I, I understand that with thousands of brands to choose from, more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in Texas. <laughs> Not just in Texas, Mr. Judson, in the world. Well, I was making it sound more important. <laughs> well, anyway, Gracie, you can make the coffee out in the woods. Just take our coffee pot. All right, but where will I plug it in? Not the electric one. Never mind, little lady, I got a coffee pot in my camping outfit. Yeah, Gracie, you just bring along a tin or a jar of that Roaster Fresh Maxwell House coffee. You know, it comes to your Roaster Fresh two ways now, in the familiar blue vacuum tin or in the new ultra-vacuum glass jar. All right, Bill. Well, let's get going. I want to shoot some rabbits. You think you can hit one, little man? Oh, George is a wonderful shot. He can shoot from the shoulders or he can shoot from the hip. Yeah, can't wait to get out there and take a couple of pot shots. Shoots from there, too, huh? <laughs> Come on, let's go, let's go. I've almost got my fur coat. Yes, George is the only one who hasn't shot anything. Well, watch this. There's a rabbit at the foot of that tree. Oh, wonderful. Now I've got a hat. A hat? You knocked a bird's nest out of the tree. <laughs> Come on, let's move to another spot. Well, you'll soon have your coat, Gracie. I got five rabbits. How many have you got, Doc? Seven. Uh, Meredith? Nine. Judson? Twelve. George? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Gracie, George is becoming more and more depressed about his poor marksmanship, but I think I've got a plan to restore his self-confidence. Oh, uh, what is it, Doctor? Well, you take the rabbits that the rest of us have shot and go around behind that big rock. We'll tell George that there are rabbits on top of it, and every time you hear him shoot, Toss one over the rock. Oh, and he'll think he killed it. Exactly. I'll tip off the others and we'll all get started. All right. George, look, there's a rabbit on top of that rock. Where? I don't see it. It's there. Shoot. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll be done. I hit it. It fell right at my feet. Hey. There's another on the rock, George. I don't see it. Go ahead, shoot. Okay. <laughs> Again, I got one. Yonder's another one, George. Same spot. Where? I can't Never see mind, it. Never mind, just shoot. <laughs> Three in a row. Boy, I've got eyes like a hawk. There's another one, George. See, right there. Never on mind, top. I can see it. 
hey, I'm terrific. Bang, and I've got a rabbit. <laughs> Another one? But I didn't even shoot. I just said bang. <laughs> Wait a minute, there's something phony going on here. Bang, bang. <laughs> I thought so. Who's behind that rock? Nobody but us rabbits. <laughs> Gracie, come out from there, making a fool of me in front of everybody. No, don't blame Gracie, George. We were all in on it to help. Yeah, George. George well, I don't need your help. You can all go home and leave me here, or you can all go and leave me here alone. I'll get my wife a fur coat. Well, when will you be home, dear? Well, I'm not leaving these woods till I shot something. Well, at least come out in November to vote. <laughs> Never mind, just run along. All right, dear. And, and whatever you shoot, I'll wear it. <laughs> Oh, George, I knew you could do it. I'm so proud of you. Are you really happy with what I shot? Oh, you bet I am, darling. I'll be the only woman in town with a cowskin coat. <laughs> Join us again next Thursday when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Bill Goodwin, Meredith Wilson, and our guest, Kay Kaiser. The Maxwell House Orchestra, of course, and yours truly, Toby Reed. Good things. The easy way. Do you like good things the easy way? Then get instant Maxwell House coffee. So good. So good. True coffee flavor and fragrance because Instant Maxwell House is not a so-called coffee product. It's all pure Maxwell House coffee in instant form. And so easy. So easy. Instant Maxwell House means great coffee instantly in your cup. No fuss, no muss, no bother. Today, try Instant Maxwell House. Instantly good to the last drop. Good night, folks. We're a little late. Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one preferred brand of coffee. Okay, George Burns and Gracie Allen, February 5th, 1948. They, um, they milked the mink coat thing and then they went on to a hunting trip. <laughs> they don't exactly go together, but they made it work, I guess. All right, well, that is episode one in a mini-series of four on married comedy teams. We'll be back next week. Well, we'll be here on Thursday with our tribute to Escape with Keith Scott. Uh, but we'll be back uh, next Tuesday with more comedy. And it'll be an episode of the Phil Harris and Alice Faye Show. So I will see you next Tuesday. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>